in this episode, you will learn how to migrate XCT fail into Swift testing. Here, I'm trying to test this product store and I want to fetch some products. This product store is getting information about the amount of products I want to receive, okay? And if everything is fine, if all the products are loaded, I will get uh, a number of products and I want to test if this uh, products count is equal to three, okay? If we look a little bit close here, let me open this, and I have different states here, okay? So I'm looking for this one to the state loaded and then providing the results of the array of products. And this is the array that we are getting from this product store. Since this is private uh, property, I will have to just uh, review um, the products uh, from this uh, uh, associated value, okay? So, but, well, this is a um, simple test. But the thing is that I want also to provide uh, some edge cases. For example, uh, right now I'm trying to test uh, this um, API client and I'm mocking it with always a success, okay? So if you, I don't want to get too much details on this. I, I'm leaving the full source code in the description if you want to take a look. But the only thing you need to know is that this mock uh, uh, instance will always return a success and it will always return three products in this count, okay? So if we run this, let's see what happened. Yeah, everything is fine, okay? And this is good because we are getting a loaded state and we are getting products, that's good. However, if we are in exit test and we want to check when we got something not expected, how can we report that issue? Well, um, in this case where we are using a guard, we can provide an edge case here and we can simply say, uh, we can use XCT fail. There is an uh, assert when something is wrong and we want to report something uh, to the test framework to saying, oh, this test is failed. And we can provide uh, even meaningful context about what's going on here. For example, here we are saying, or we are expecting a loaded state, but we got something different, okay? Now, in order to test this, let me change this configuration. Instead of testing uh, success, let's test an error. And now let's see the result. You will see an issue. Now, uh, this is expected again because this test error is always throwing an, er an error. This is just to test that, okay, or both uh, flows are working as expected. Um, here we got, uh, well, this uh, particular error saying that the operation could not be completed. Um, that's fine. I mean, it, it is just for demo purposes right now. But the point of this video is that in exit test, we have this exit fail for that. Now, if we want to migrate a code like this, what can we do in Swift testing? Let's see that right now. Let's move up a little bit. And let's open this uh, piece of code. We are going to translate or migrate everything that is here into Swift testing. The first step is getting the setup. And then we just simply, simply need to copy paste this because this is exactly the same code. Um, now, for this particular um, assert, since that um, we are in Swift testing, we have a uh, different uh, that actually, well, the autocomplete from Xcode 16 is helping me, but not exactly what I want. Let me just add count equal to three. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Love that. It's finally working. You can see my experience, my first experience in, in a video that I'm showing you right now and in the description. Okay, we have the setup and we have now the assert. Um, but then how can we validate that? Okay, let me copy this piece of code. <clears throat> and well, 
we need some kind of replacement for exit it fail. And it's really straightforward to make this uh, transition. Instead of using exit fail, we will use something called issue dot record. It is working identical to exit fail reporting that something is wrong with your test. Issue has a lot of uh, more properties, but most of the time you will use this, this um, function, issue.record, that, as the name suggests, is recording that something is wrong with your test. And now, um, for looking the scope, am I doing some? Oh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, it is Parox. My bad. Now, since that we are running test error, let's see what happened with this test. And you're seeing that it is throwing an error. And we have a different uh, uh, prefix, but it's the same uh, message. It was recorded, expected loaded state, but we got an error. Okay? And that's the way you will use, um, you will report issues in your test, something that shouldn't expect or shouldn't be expected, but you need to mark it as a fail in order to fix it. Okay, and just to make sure that everything is fine, let's now test tech succeed. And since it's the same code, it should work. There you go. And that's it for this episode. This was just a quick video to introduce you to issue.record. However, I have one more question. Uh, there are situations where most of the time we are now using a single weight to interact with a asynchronous test. But what will happen if we still have some uh, delegates or closures that we need to maintain and we don't have enough time to translate it to a single weight? How can we test those kind of uh, uh, code? Well, we will see that in the next episode. So stay tuned. That's it for me. Remember, my name is Pete and this, this is Sifan Tips. Thanks for watching and have a great day.